Give a man a fish, feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish, feed him for a lifetime. Provide a man with a fish for a coin, you have a business. So yeah, painting for money. Sounds wonderful, right? So is it for you? Is it not for you? Hopefully by the end of this video, you will know the answer to this question. Now keep in mind that I do not consider myself to be exactly a commission painter. However, I have painted for some clients here and there and even for my friendly local gaming store. So I would say that I have some experience when it comes to painting for money. And in the past week or so, I have been completing some miniatures for one of my clients and it wasn't long before I realized that there are some great things and some really bad things when it comes to commission painting. And I thought to myself, why the hell not make a video on it? So first, let's start with the positives. Money. Now, obviously, when you start commission painting, uh, you want to do something that you enjoy and make some sweet cash on it. If you are still studying or you want to start a side hustle, this is a great way to do it. Now, obviously, starting commission painting in the US or UK can be a little more challenging since the cost of living there is a little bit higher, but there are definitely people that can do it. However, if you are living in, for example, Russia or Poland or any other country where everything is relatively cheaper, you can afford to go down in price for your service and compete with other commission painters. It is no coincidence that great commission painting studios such as Awaken Realms are based in Poland. You don't care for the miniatures. Because the miniatures that you are painting for someone else will not end up in your hands, you can really go nuts with them. I really like this aspect of commission painting since I can try out stuff that I would not dare to try on my own models. For example, if you are not brave enough to try out wet blending, you can try to pick a spot on some miniature that is not that visible and try to dare. For example, if you are painting a squick like this one, you could simply test creating a gradient between his belly and the rest of his body. If you are painting 20 squicks like this, I don't think that someone is gonna be mad at you that the gradient on this hard to see spot is not exactly perfect. So if you are painting a lot of miniatures, it really gives you some space to experiment. Now of course, if you are not painting an army but just like one display piece, uh, that is a whole different story. And that actually brings us to the next point. Choose your specialty. If you don't like focusing on a single miniature for too long, uh, you can simply paint a whole army to tabletop standard. If you hate batch painting and you like focusing on one miniature and showing your skill to the full extent, you probably want to paint display pieces. When you start commission painting as a side hustle, you don't have to accept every single client and that is okay. If you did, it would probably take you too much time and you would be too frustrated. By doubling down on your strengths instead, you will have way more fun and I guess that your clients will be way more satisfied. And finally, the last personal positive about commission painting, work from home. Do you like places that are not crowded? Well, what about your home? When I was just a kid in elementary school, uh, one of my little dreams that I had was to work from home, since other kids weren't really that nice to me. So if you do not like to work with too many people or you just like to schedule everything on your own terms, this is definitely something that is possible when you are painting for money. Okay, so I think that covers the positives, so now let's look more into why it sucks. Clients. In regards to clients, there are two things you have to keep in mind. One is that negotiating with anyone can be sometimes quite frustrating. And two, that you have to get some clients in the first place. So if you have any customers, there are always certain demands that they have and you have to satisfy these demands as best as you can. So if the client is not happy about certain thing that you have painted, chances are that you have to redo these things and while this is entirely regular, sometimes it can get quite annoying. For example, if you have calculated that you want to paint X amount of hours on some project and investing more time in it is not profitable, 
it can ruin your plans. So revisions will sometimes happen, but the best thing that you can do to avoid them is to message your client if you are not sure about any steps that you are taking. For example, let's say that you are painting Warhammer 40k army and your client wants to add purple to some places on the vehicles. Either you have to get clear instructions beforehand, or if the client is not sure, you have to send him some pictures with progress before the miniature is actually finished. And believe me, this will save you so much time. The second part of this point is that you have to get your clients in the first place. This can be quite hard if you have not painted too many miniatures yet or if you are not at the level that people desire. Over time I have personally painted quite many miniatures and built some reasonable audience. So when someone wants something painted, they usually hit me up in the DMs. So how do you get your clients? Now I have no experience with Fiverr, but my guess is that you can put your service there and some people might hit you up. Another thing that you can do is to advertise at your friendly local gaming store or talk directly to players that you know. Remember that not all people have as much time as they would like to in order to paint their armies and because of that you will always find someone that will be willing to pay for your service. So it is not just your job to paint for such people but also to find them in the first place. Meet the deadlines. With all the tournaments and gaming events happening all the time, you will have to meet the deadlines so your clients will be able to use their miniatures on time. If you are a very slow painter or if you are not able to meet the deadlines, you will feel stressed all the time and your clients may become dissatisfied. So if you are not sure that you can deliver something on time, it is better to not take that order. But since sometimes delays can happen, it is necessary to let the client know in advance rather than on the date of delivery. You might actually find out that many clients are very understanding. Price. Now this is something that I personally struggle with because my estimated time that I am going to spend on the miniature is hardly ever accurate. You want to set the right price for your work, so you are not painting for $2 an hour. But at the same time, if you set the price too high, you won't be able to compete with other commission painters. I think that there are multiple ways that you can kinda work around it. For example, you can give the client an estimated price range and see if they agree to it or not. Either way, if you cannot manage to paint fast at reasonable price, chances are that you are not going to stay for long in this business. Because either you will not make enough money or you will have to go down in quality of your paint job. You don't choose your work. Unfortunately, you will have to paint what your clients want, not what you want. What is even worse though, they will choose quality of the paint job, not you. So if you hate batch painting but your client wants an army done to the tabletop standard and there are no other clients in line, you will have to bite the bullet and just go for it. This point actually frustrates me too sometimes, since I would like to spend more time on some miniatures, but since it wouldn't make sense financially, I have to do less than my best. Bureaucracy. If you make some money on a consistent basis from painting miniatures, you will have to tax it. Now this depends on your country's law, but you will have to also get some kind of permit to provide your miniature painting service. In my country, this is not that difficult, but still, it is something that makes running this business a little more annoying. You don't care for the miniatures. Now you might ask, Zumikito, you already mentioned this in the positives, so why are you putting it in the negatives? Well, the answer is simple. Even though not caring about the miniatures can be good because you try out stuff that you wouldn't otherwise, in the end, you will not keep the miniatures. Since you have spent so much time painting some project, letting it go can be quite heartbreaking, especially when you have put your time and soul into it. This can be especially hard if you really like the miniatures themselves. You know, when I started painting miniatures, I just wanted to keep some cool plastic dudes in my shelf and have some games with them. If I had to give them away, I would be quite sad since I was so emotionally invested in them. So depending on your personality, this can be quite an issue. And the last point is, you work from home. So once again, this was positive and a negative too. But why? Just ask yourself this. 
Do you really want to be alone for a whole week, closed in your room and just be isolated like that? Some people definitely do it, but for others this is insane. I personally always need someone to talk to and chat with, so I am not sure if I could do this full time to 100%. Alright, so those are the most important points that you have to keep in mind. Now to answer the question if commission painting is worth it for you or not, you will have to get through each of these points and think about it. So if you want to make money doing what you love and you have no problem working alone, painting fast for a reasonable price, go for it. However, if you are a slow painter and you constantly tell yourself that you would rather paint miniatures, that you are gonna keep at the quality that you want, I don't think that it's a good fit. So ultimately, it is up to you. Do your own research and consider the points mentioned in this video before you start and hopefully you will get your answer sooner rather than later. For me, personally, I don't think that I could manage commission painting full time, but I have no problem picking commissions here and there. Ok, so I hope that you guys learned something new today, if you did and if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Also, if you want to help this channel out, go ahead and give this video thumbs up, so the YouTube gods will bless me and they will shove this video in front of others. Definitely let me know if I have missed anything in the comment section below and see you guys in the next one. Bye.